Welcome to the Final Fantasy XV Weapon Guide, a series showcasing each weapon class's repertoire of attacks and highlighting the strengths and weaknesses. Today, we'll be talking about the 7th through 10th Royal Arms required. I've done my best to find everything I could, but if I'm missing something, please mention in a comment and I'll add it in the description, in annotation, or in a follow-up video. I'm doing my best to avoid as many spoilers as possible, but given the nature of the topic, if you want to avoid specific weapon spoilers, this is where you want to stop watching. We'll be covering the Royal Arms in the order they appear on the main menu, which is roughly the order they're obtainable in, except for the last three, but they're story required. The Sword of the Tall could have been cool, but really just falls flat. It handles about as well as a greatsword cutting through mud, and has basically no moveset. Weapon's claim to flame is that each attack hits multiple times due to the chainsaw blade, but in practice, the sword doesn't do enough damage to justify the intense animation lock. If you miss the attack, you're still stuck in the animation lock because the delay is the chainsaw's cutting through an enemy is baked into the animation itself. Considering it does half the normal amount of break damage as other weapons, there really isn't much to The Warp Strike has knocked his hover in front of an enemy and do three 360 degree slashes. It doesn't take much HP on hit, which is nice, and has a decent hitbox. It isn't invulnerable for the entire animation though, so be careful. Not that you would ever really use this weapon. And naturally, it has no unique moves. The Mace of the Fierce is what you get when you take the strongest weapon you can find and balance it by making it slower than molasses. And then forget to actually make it the strongest weapon. The Mace focuses on causing break. The break modifiers on attacks range from 2 to 3 times, but any respectable weapon is going to inflict break just as fast purely due to the speed of literally every other weapon in weapon class. The Sword of the Tall might lose to the Mace in a race to break, but only because it's about as trash just in a different way. At least the mace kind of does damage. The warp strike is the best thing about the mace of the fear since it has a 2 times break multiplier on the first hit and a 3 times on the second. Plus, since it's a warp strike, at least one of the hits is pretty much guaranteed. Just to emphasize how much potential was squandered on the mace, it has no unique attacks. <laughs> God damn, does this thing suck. The Shield of the Just isn't an amazing weapon. It is a shield after all. But it does have a few properties that you might enjoy depending on how you're playing the game. The first thing you want to know is that if you're playing with a lot of strength on Noctis then you don't want to use the Shield of the Just. Remember how I mentioned that strength buffs are counted twice with Royal Arms? The Shield of the Just gives you a cool negative 100 strength which counts against you twice for any Royal Arms you're using including the Shield. In a more positive light, this weapon gives some great defensive bonuses and has some unique combat applications. Guarding with this weapon causes Noctis to become stationary but gain the cover bonus. This is helpful if you take a lot of damage from enemies or you just like using some of the more self-harming Royal Arms since you can get your HP back quickly. The guard also has the ability to defend against attacks that other shields can't and phase doesn't dodge, albeit you still take some damage. This is a good choice for magic builds since it's easy to get a high magic stat and it's free defensive stats when all your accessories are going to magic. The, leap. the warp strike for the shield is noteworthy not because it's a good attack but for some metagame application. By combining this with the monster summoning whistle in the three valleys location in the lead region you can quickly summon weak vortus which easily die to the AoE effect on the shield of the just warp strike. Any warp strike kill grants you 1 AP which makes the shield great for farming AP. In combat it's okay, it doesn't do a lot of damage because of the 100 strength though. This weapon has no unique attacks, but its blitz combo is decently fast if you need to use it. Way better than the shield classes at least. 
If you keep this weapon in your wheel, you can take advantage of the fact that some Royal Arms Blitz combos are broken up into multiple sections and use a shield to skip ahead. Start the combo with your weapon, switch to the shield for its very quick opener, then swap back to skip to the next segment. It's a neat trick if you're finding the finisher command on Royal Arms Tricky. If switching weapons mid-combo and being flashy is your thing, then take a look at the Scepter of the Pious. It's the other of the two royal arms that scales off magic instead of strength, which is great as you're probably spending weapon slots on the bow of the clever and magic spells so you have less offensive tools if you stack magic. The reason for this is the Scepter's gimmick being shape-shifting to take advantage of multiple different weapons all in one. Though there isn't as much variety in the weapons that the Scepter can take the form of, there's enough to make it a really fun and useful weapon. The Warp Strike is that of another weapon in the Royal Arm class, the Trident of the Oracle, but has great utility because of how it moves Noctis into the air for a great angle of attack, but it costs about 20% HP total for both hits, so be careful. The Scepter of the Pious has unique attacks out the wazoo. Kinda. Each directional attack transforms into another Royal Arm and alters the Blitz combo. The forward attack brings out the Sword of the Tall, the side attack summons the Blade of the Mystic for the faster middle strikes of its Blitz combo, and the away attack conjures the Trident of the Oracle that summons a Phantom of Noctis which deals damage to whatever it touches. Tapping the stick in any direction after beginning the away attack combo will cause Noctis to jump into that direction where he can perform an aerial attack with the Axe of the Conqueror. Conversely, attacking with the regular Blitz combo, forward or side attack, and then beginning a different directional attack, including the regular Blitz, will cause Noctis to chain from the first into the second. As a side note, the aerial attack always warps into range before swinging, which is unique to the Scepter of the Pious in terms of Royal Arms, and really makes the aerial attack of the Axe of the Conqueror useful. Thank you for watching this edition of the Final Fantasy XV Weapon Guide. I hope you gained some valuable insight that will help you survive your journey in EOS, and I hope to see you next time, where we'll learn a whole lot more.